finding or developing your own trading strategies, which actually make money, is the hardest part of mechanical or system-based trading, in my opinion. For those of you who have watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I often share strategy ideas with you. And today, I'm going to take one of those strategies and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to program it so that we can run extensive back tests and then eventually turn on automated trading if we want then that truly is a hands-off trading approach. I use trading and backtesting software called Multicharts and it uses a programming language very similar to that of what TradeStation uses. The strategy that I'm going to demonstrate is not my own, but it's one I picked up years ago from a book by Courtney Smith. And I call it the Daily Range Breakout Strategy and it uses an inside daily bar as the setup. I've done previous videos on this strategy and included the best markets to trade it on. And if you haven't seen that, I'll link that at the top of the screen now and also in the description down below. To keep this video as relevant as possible, I'm gonna jump straight into the programming of the strategy. And if by the end of the video, by the end of looking through the code, you don't fully understand how the strategy works and you want to learn more, then go and watch those previous videos. I'm not an expert programmer, I'm a trader first. However, what I am pretty good at is getting the software multicharts to do exactly what I want it to do. But there's many ways to arrive at the same results. So there's many ways to program the same strategy. And I'm sure there's probably faster and more efficient ways to program my strategies than what I sometimes use. So let's have a look at the programming language. What we see here is the power language editor. This is the programming side of multicharts. This is where we write our strategies or write our code. Now to start with, everything you see in green it normally starts with a double forward slash. Anything that's in green is not recognized as part of the, the code once applied to a chart. It's purely used for notes. And we start with what I've written here. I've just written a little title, an inside bar, daily range breakout strategy. Now, this is for you guys if you would like to copy the code. It's important, use a 10 minute chart, but adjust the minimum bar size according to the Forex pair. Now, minimum bar size is an input that I've got, which is adjustable within once the code is on the chart, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll talk about that in a moment. The next note I've put is it's set up for an OAND data. If we want to use different data, then adjust the times and for the different data sources. Now, the times are where we've got here and here. So multicharts looks at the timestamps on each bar. I've said we're using a 10 minute chart. Now, part of the code is I don't want trades occurring after we've exited the trade. Now we're gonna exit the trade near to the end of the day. We're gonna exit the day at 16.50. Now, there are two bars. We've got 16.50 bar and the 16.59 bar after that. So I don't wanna be entering a trade within the last sort of 10 minutes of the trading session. Now, these timestamps, 16.59 and 16.50, apply for 10 minute data with OANDA. If you were using different data, like LMAX for example, the last bar on LMAX is actually stamped 1700. So there is no 16.59 bar with LMAX, it will be 1700. And if you were using a 10 minute chart, you wouldn't get a 16.50 bar, you would have a 16.45 or maybe a 16.55. If you were using a five minute chart, then you could actually use a 16.50, but that's just because of how the different data suppliers timestamp their bars. So for whatever data you're using, bring up a 10 minute chart, just check at the timestamp, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, just check the timestamp of the two last bars and put those in here and here and exit in here as well, okay? So let's get started with the first line of the code. Now I've got an input, minimum bar size, I've called it. Now the reason I've got that is, is because we're looking for an inside daily bar setup. Now I'm saying that we don't want to take trades if that inside bar is less than a minimum size. Now at the moment, this strategy is gonna to apply to USD JPY and 0.1 is equivalent to 10 pips of dollar yen. So I'm saying 
don't take the trade if that inside bar is less than 10 pips. Now I'll just move over the chart, I'll show you for why. This is an example here. So these are all 10 minute bars. By the way, if I go to the two last bars, if you look on the timestamp, we've got 1650 and then the very last one is 1659. Okay, so there are timestamps on the bars. Now, you see these, let's remove that. These two dotted vertical lines indicate session breaks. And if I scroll, we'll see this is a session break. Normally, we just get the session break at 16.59. That's the end and start of the new session. With this one here, we've got the two very, very close together. It's very, very strange, but notice the date. It's on Christmas Eve. And for some reason, once the date is downloaded, we've got this tiny, tiny little bar just here, if you can see, within this session. So multicharts is actually going to reference that as a bar, and it is an inside day in comparison to the previous daily bar. So what that's going to do is that's going to mess with the code. And because that's such a small bar, in fact, let's look at it uh, from the high to the low, that's actually that's less than one pip, um, that's going to mess with our code. So that's why I've got that minimum bar size. And I'm saying, look, don't take any trades if they're less than 10 pips. We're rarely going to get a day that's less than 10 pips. Now, the other thing I need to mention is I've written up here, adjust the minimum bar size according to the Forex pair. 0 0.1, how I've got the data set up, 0 0.1 is equivalent to 10 pips with dollar yen. However, anything else, uh, euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar versus the US dollar, then that wouldn't be 0 0.1. That would actually be a different value. It would actually be 0 0.001. So if 10 pips for euro dollar would be equivalent to that. That's why I say adjust it. And we can adjust that in the code, but let's leave it as that as we're using dollar yen. So that's adjustable in the code, and I'll show you how to adjust that when we go back to the chart. Now we've got a variable inside bar size. Now what that's doing, multicharts, is just calculating the size of that inside bar. Remember we saw that tiny one a minute ago. So that we can say, if make sure that the inside bar size is greater than what we've inputted here or what we've stipulated. So I've got a little note here that says measure the size of the inside bar. So the variable, which is the inside bar size that we've just set up, is equal to now, high S, which means the high of the session, and then in brackets we've got one, so that's one bar ago. So we're looking at yesterday's high minus yesterday's low. That's going to tell us the size of the inside bar, or it's actually going to tell us the size of yesterday's bar, whether it's an inside bar or not. So that's going to calculate the size of yesterday's bar. So the next line, this is our setup for the inside bar. If yesterday was an inside bar, then begin. So we're saying, if the high of yesterday was less than the high of two days ago, and the low of yesterday was greater than the low of two days ago, that makes us our inside bar. And, now this is where I don't want to trade on these bars, and the time is greater or less than 16.59, and the time is greater or less than 16.50, so that's basically excluding these two bars and the inside bar size remember we've just measured the size of the inside bar is greater than the minimum bar size minimum bar size here is 10 pips then begin so we're saying if we've got an inside bar and it's not occurring at these times and the minimum bar size of the inside bar is greater than what we've stipulated then we can start the code so that's our conditions. Now we've just got our entry orders. We want to say we want to buy the next bar at the highest one. So that's the high of that inside bar. And stop, that means we've got a stop order. If it said buy next bar at highest limit, then it would be a limit order. We might say at market, that's just a market order. But because the highest one is going to be a worse price than what we're currently at, it's a stop order. And 
sell short next bar at lowest one stop. So whichever one it hits, it's going to enter the trade. Now we are at our exit order. Exit orders at 16.50. I've just decided that we want to get out near the end of the day. I've chosen nine minutes before the session ends, just because the spreads are a little narrower, a little more favorable. So we're saying, if the time is 16.50, then begin. And just scroll down. I'm saying, sell next bar at market. Now, that means multicharts will recognize whether we're long or short. If we're long, then sell is an exit order from a long position, so we'll get out of the trade. And buy to cover, next bar at market. If multicharts knows that we're already short, then buy to cover is an exit order from the short. And then end, we're ending that little statement. We ended this statement here as well. Remember, we got conditions, then begin, do our entries, end. And then same, if the time is 16.50, begin, do either of these, end. Okay, and that's it for the code. It's that simple. So now that code, if we hit compile, make sure there's no errors, it's compiled successfully. Now that code is ready to be applied to the chart. So let's go over to the chart. We'll apply it to this chart here. Let's just check to see, let's put some, let's put a long range of data on here from 1st of January 2008 to the 25th of August 2021. That's as much data as I've got for the minute. We we'll wait for that to populate. And I'm using, like I said, OANDA data, and I'm using exchange settings. To apply that strategy to the chart, we insert a study and find out what we've called it. You remember that I've called it JG Demo Inside Bar Video 1. Uh, and this is where we've got that minimum bar size that we can change. And we can also optimize that. We, you know, we might, I've just guessed that we don't want to be taking an inside bar less than 10 pips, but 20 pips might be better. We can check that. In the properties, I always like to run the base currency for whatever pair it is. So in this case, it will be Japanese yen. I tend to test every time with 100,000 fixed shares or contracts or units. That's one full lot of Forex. And now that strategy is applied to the chart. If we scroll out, we can see the some of the trades. So remember these vertical lines indicate the session. So each period between these lines is one day or one session. So this long trade here, if we look, We can see this bar here, or this day's worth of data here, would have been an inside day. So the lowest point here is actually higher than this point here, which is the previous low, and the highest point here is lower than this high here, okay, which is the previous day. So this is our inside bar, then it's saying, right, we've got the inside bar set up, now we want to buy at, if the price breaks above the high, and if I put the line on, we can see this was the high point here. And if we see our little blue arrow there, if I come off it, that's the price that we got in at. And we've got sell at the end of the day or at 16.50, which we stipulated in the code. Now we have the strategy applied to the chart and we're happy that it's working correctly. I know it is working correctly, but you can study the entries and the exits to make sure they're working according to your rules. Now we can, at the click of a button, get a full backtest report, and we can also turn on automated trading if we want. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, you find it helpful, then please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up now. So let's have a look at the backtest report for this strategy. And there's the equity curve spanning over those 13 and a half, just, more, just over years. Let's look at the long equity curve and the short equity curve and we can see that this strategy is still making new highs. This is years after I actually found this strategy in Courtney Smith's book, so that's pretty good. I must say, on dollar yen, this strategy does work the best, but like I said earlier in the video, go over to my older videos that I've linked, and I'll show you the other markets that it does work best on too. And the last thing we can do 
once this is applied and we're happy with it, at the click of a button, we can turn on automated trading. There's a few extra settings that we need to just make sure of, make sure multi-chance is connected correctly to your broker, whoever you might use, and then we can literally just turn on the strategy. And it, at the moment, this will be trading one full lot. If we didn't want to be trading one full lot, we can either adjust it here manually, or we can actually program it into the code. We can say something like buy 50,000 contracts next bar at high S, for example. So that's all there is to programming a trading strategy in multicharts. Once programmed, you can see that we can quickly run the back tests and carry out developments improving the strategy if need be. In this example or demonstration, I have chosen a pretty simple trading strategy. They probably don't get much more simple than that to program. Obviously, more complicated strategies just have more lines of code and they're going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more working out, especially if you're newer to the programming language. Multicharts itself as a software is extremely powerful and it's also very user friendly. You'll find programming multicharts is actually much more simple and quick than the likes of MetaTrader, but the difference is MetaTrader you can often get for free. Multicharts is a premium piece of software. You do have to pay for it. And there's not much more to say in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have been using Multicharts already, then I'm sure you've probably already worked out how to do basic strategies like that. If you are thinking of moving to automated trading or using Multicharts to develop your own strategies, then that's a demonstration of how quickly and easily it can be done. So I hope you found it very helpful. And until the next video, this is Jared Goodwin, and thank you.